Please join me in welcoming Joseph Kopser. Well, thank you and Dean Hartzell and the other deans that were part of allowing me to share this day with you. Uh, it's a huge honor. Uh, so first of all, I not only want to thank the deans, but the staff and faculty. So at this point, class of 2019, give them a hand. All right, class of 2019, you are this close to being there. However, you would not have gotten where you are in these front rows if it hadn't been for the people in the back rows. So I want you all to make a lot of noise for them and parents, friends, family, give yourselves a hand as well. This is a huge day for a lot of reasons and I've had the honor to be a part of a lot of graduations and to hear a lot of speeches, not just at my graduation and those of my three daughters, but also the students that I've been able to teach over the years. And of all those speeches, the only ones I ever remember were the short ones. <laughs> so I'm gonna to try to honor that today with advice I got from an old boss in the army who said, when it comes to speaking, be brief, be bright, and then be gone. So that's what we're gonna do. But before I go, I just wanna leave with you one phrase. And it's a pretty big concept, so I'm going to break it down into a bunch of life hacks for you. But this one phrase is very simple, and it's carried me through everything to this day. And it is for you to understand that people will be what they can see. People will be what they can see. And there's so much inside of that. I'll give you one example, one fantastic example of that. Robert Smith, very successful Austin businessman, Vista Equity Partners, you may have heard that earlier this year, he went and did something incredible, went to a commencement exercise at Morehouse College, and during his speech, he announced that he was taking the wealth that he had accrued through the years and was using it to pay it forward by paying down all of the student debt of the graduating class of Morehouse this year. That is what we mean by people being what they can see and the inspiration that provides others. So today I have a very big announcement of what I'm going to give to you, the class of 2019. Free advice. <laughs> okay, look, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a young entrepreneur, I'm not there yet to give you all free graduation, but one of you or 10 of you is gonna take this free advice which you are gonna turn into something priceless, you will pay it forward, and you will pay the debts of the class of 2039 or 49 and beyond. But here's the problem that you face going out into this new world. The economy of today is changing faster than it ever has in the history of civilization. The forces of globalization, artificial intelligence, the movement of people into cities. It's gonna disrupt your future in a way that no generation your age prior to you has ever seen. But here's the good news, that if you can maintain the awareness of being part of what we call learning organizations, those that study what works, and more importantly, understands why it doesn't, and then fix it. Because when you go out into an organization, if you remember that people will be what they can see and you embody that life learning and lifelong pursuit of understanding what's going around you, you'll be fine. And as we used to say in the army, soldiers are not in the army, soldiers are the army. You will not be going into a company or creating your own, you are the company. How you choose to conduct yourself and how you treat others will set a tone for everyone around you. But now here's the good news. If you, if you believe this idea that people will be what they can see, you're already doing the first thing right, which is to set the example, to be the role model. Behind you in these rows here in Bass Concert Hall are nieces and nephews, cousins, little brothers, little sisters, older brothers and sisters who see what you have done. They now want to be you. They want to learn from watching the hard work that you put in growing up as a kid, applying yourself in college, and what that has led to. And that idea of role modeling is important, but there's a darker side to it. 
And you're going to see it when you're out in your companies going forward. There is a toxic leadership. There is a negative aspect to leadership that I hope you understand is not what right looks like. Because if you can role model what's right about treating people in a positive way, about leading by example, then your peers, the people that will later work for you, will build better organizations going forward because they will be following your example. They will see what you did and tell those stories. But there's another thing to consider. You want to be the change. You, could, you should seek out the opportunity to be the change you want to see. When you join your organization, you don't like something about what you see, be the entrepreneur and change it. It's what I learned from my sixth grade teacher, Mrs. Audrey Grievous. She was a civil rights icon in the 1950s and 60s. And when I had her in class as a skinny little 12-year-old, she says, when you see a problem, go and fix it. Go and fix it. Don't wait on others. At its very heart, that's what entrepreneurship is about, is solving problems. But there's another aspect. What you need to understand is that through role modeling, you have a responsibility to build the next bench, to be able to focus on mentorship. And mentorship and life coaching doesn't even have to be anything more than showing an interest in the people that work with you or work with you. Perhaps the most important question I ever learned about mentorship came from one of the Army's most senior graduates of the University of Texas, a gentleman named Robert W. Cohn. And before he passed away, he made it clear to everyone who worked for him, if you want to take care of folks and mentor their careers going forward, ask them one simple question. So what do you want to do next? What do you want to do next? Too many bosses have ground their workforce into the dirt because they want to step on them for quick profit or quick reward. But it is those bosses who are more concerned at looking down than looking up that take care of the people and ask, what do you want to do next? What does your roadmap look like in the future? And when you get that right, nothing's going to hold you back. And you now have an opportunity to pay it forward. Over these years here at McCombs, you've met lots of students who you see promise in. You've met lots of students that just need a hand up. That's where you come in and get to be that role model and to pay that forward. But in this pursuit, people are not going to know what you were able to do and accomplish and the value of that hard work unless you tell your story. We know the literature is out there. Not everyone tells their story in the same way. Sometimes you will just tell your story by quiet examples of leadership. But other chances when you have it, pull that person aside and say, you know, this went well today, but in my previous job with a previous boss, wow, we screwed this up six ways to Sunday. And the more you can tell your story of your mistakes, it gets even easier for those with you to follow your lead because they see the way that you were able to learn and grow from your mistakes because we're all going to make mistakes. It's how you bounce back from them that is the true mark of character. And so on a lighter note, because I know I sound too serious, but on a lighter note, I want to make sure you've got some of these quick, simple life hacks. You're going out into a world where others before you have become who they are by seeing the people around them, by the popular culture of our time. So I am asking you, so that you better understand your boss or your boss's boss, spend the next several weekends over the holiday break binge watching every 80s movie you can find. And then when you've gone through the best of the 80s, go back to the 70s and the 60s and just keep going. Because the more you understand how we came to be, the easier it is for you to fit in, to be a part of the team, and to go forward. So rather than in resisting the opportunity to say, okay, boomer, <laughs> understand through their music and their pop culture how they came to be in the exact same way that if they're a good boss, they're seeking out your popular culture to better understand you. And so in closing... It's about remembering 
that at the end of the day, of all the teams I've been a part of in the military, in business, in academia, in politics, of all those worlds, all the problems came down to one concept, and that's people. And people too, awful for, too often forgetting that people will be what they can see. They either follow good leadership in a good direction, or they take toxic leadership and make it worse. So some of my favorites, real quick, besides watching every 80s movie that you can, it's a simple concept and it's rest. R-E-S-T. I had a boss once, his name was George Casey. He ran the war in Iraq. I've never met a person with perhaps more responsibility than maybe a leader of a country. And even in the 24-hour operations of combat, it was important for him as a leader and you to take this heed and this advice to pause, to rest, to read. Read something beyond the world that you're in. E, to exercise, to burn off that stress, to stay healthy so that you can lead by example by always being present and fit. Sleep. Get your rest, learn to nap, and for goodness sakes, turn your phone off when you sleep. The buzzing all night long, I have no idea how you get any restful sleep. And then lastly, think. Unplug. Unplug the phone. Go for a walk. Sit out on your front porch or on your couch without the TV on and reflect, as Ida said. Reflect and think about where you are and where you're going. And then for me, and the way I raised my daughters, and the way I coached teams and built organizations in the private sector, public sector, and all throughout, I reminded them as often as I could three simple ideas. Be happy. Just try to be happy. Nobody likes working for the grumpy boss, the person who only sees the negative. So try to be happy. You won't have happy days every day, but try to be happy. Number two, do the right thing. You know what it is. All the people in the back row spent the last 20 plus years showing you, teaching you. You know what it is. The question is, when the time comes, do you choose to do the right thing? But try. And thirdly, have a good thing to say. There's enough bad things going on that you can complain about people or things all day long, but it accomplishes very little. Be happy. Do the right thing and have a good thing to say. And remember that at this moment, you are the role model, not just for friends and families, but people in your hometown who saw what you came and accomplished here at the University of Texas. And if you can remember that people will be what they can see, and you remain humble, and you seek opportunities to pay it forward, you will not only have the eyes of Texas upon you, but every person in your organization will look to you to do the right thing, to have a good thing to say, and to keep the culture happy and positive and moving forward. If you can do all that, you will go out and change the world. Class of 19, 2019, thank you very much for having me today, and congratulations. Thanks a lot, Joseph. I know I, I'll have things to take away. I would start with the John Hughes films. Uh, so I, a, little, a, little, a little bit of 16 Candles uh, will do you right. 